Um, kind of an off-road drive too, and it's not just obnoxious. <laughs> Friday, finally, huh? Yeah, I like that song, huh? Yeah, I had to good. turn it up a little bit. All right, guys. What do you guys think of that, huh? Yeah, let us know in the comments. And if you're tuning in live, thank you for joining us. And if you're tuning in after it's been live, well, this is a live video, so it's going to be a little bit different than the rest of them. So don't be surprised if this is more free-flowing and more fun. So, Nathan, today, besides answering your questions, which we get a lot of, uh, we're also going to talk about SEMA. So how was your SEMA? Woo! <laughs> it was quite a show. Um, I'll be completely honest with you guys. I'm not a huge fan of SEMA. Who is? Well, some fans who go to SEMA. The thing about SEMA is specialty equipment show, right? I mean, that's what it really is supposed to be. Yet there's a, the floors are so crowded. There's so many people. It's really hard to shoot video and take photographs with so many people there. And they don't really have a press day for us. And that's one of the reasons why I'm not thrilled to always go there, but I'm always left with this thing when I'm done with, wow, there were some really cool builds there. And it turns out there certainly was this year. Yeah, so three themes, right? You couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a Supra. In there fact, were a million Supras there. Did you go to there. a Toyota booth? Yeah, I did. And, How and many I, did they have? How many did they have? They had uh, like 12. Or more. Uh, was it 10 or 12? Something like that. All right, all right. It was and, ridiculous right, amount. I'm going to dish a little bit. Are you guys okay with that? You're going to what? Dish. Can I dish you a little bit? D dish? Okay. Kind of what we're here for. Yeah, can I dish you a little bit? So I'm at the Supra uh, press conference, and I love Toyota. They're great guys. One always says that before one dishes. <laughs> I know. Go get them. <laughs> but they had Rutledge there and one of their, like, company guys, right? Yeah. And they had this whole, like, shtick going on where, like, they're doing a build for the internal Toyota guy and for Rutledge, right? And they were going to have a contest to see which one's cooler. Okay. So they, they walked around and showed all these different like super builds, and then they had the two that they unveiled, and Rutledge's right was like a 550 horsepower turbocharged lowered super right right of course wider too yeah 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 and um, the other guy right his was same thing a 500 maybe maybe he was like 800 this guy was like 500 I don't know, it doesn't matter right? right numbers are irrelevant everything is in the hundreds in SEMA. Yeah. Uh, and uh, his was more of a retro build, and what made his cool was that it had the original spoiler from the Mark IV. So they incorporated oh, yeah. the Mark IV. Uh, and then they did this, like, the shtick where they were like, me and you, you know, where they were like, hey, I've talked to you before, let's find out which one's better, right? Let's get our Twitter followers. And it, it became so forced, right? I was just, like, sitting there like, Ugh. You were cringing. Yeah, I was cringing. Yeah, I, I was cringing because not not in a second did I believe that these two guys were buddies, mm. that they really you know had this thing. Go it was you know, and they made it seem like they were sitting around in a beer and they said, you know what, I'll build a Supra, you build a Supra, and let's see which one's better, right? right. You know, it, it could it could almost feel the the hand of the PR. Uh -huh. Actually, probably more of the advertising agency. Oh, both PR and advertising, I would imagine. You know, uh, so anyway, it's uh, it's it is cringe worthy. I've, I've I've seen other I'm done dishing. PR things like that before that have been difficult to watch. It's a shame too because both those guys are deep in the automotive world, but by forcing them to come up with something that's so unbelievable, yeah, and the I think that's a problem. I mean, there were way cool supers there, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there were really cool supers. Like this one, yeah, like that one. Like look at look that's at that. That's a three thousand GT. Yep. Uh, actually, there's a story on it on uh, TFLcar.com, and the thing about it is that really does have some retro heritage built into it. And I don't think it's overdone. Some of these other ones are just so overdone. That has the stock engine in it. It's more of a suspension brakes package with a wide body kit and some other goodies. You so, know what, that's okay. Because even you tell in stock, well, I'm just yeah. gonna say, even with stock configuration, you know, tests have shown the engine is actually potentially more powerful than Toyota is claiming. It's 335 horsepower stock. Right. So, That's really plenty. so before we get to our favorite builds and favorite things we found there, right? Uh, Mark uh, Downing wants to know, what was your least favorite part of SEMA, Nathan? Well, aside from the crowds. Oh, the crowds are horrible, yeah. And the fact that the internet at SEMA for the press <laughs> was worse than dial-up. Yeah, how do you have, like, this show and then expect journalists to actually get the word out? <laughs> let, me, let me put it to you another way, guys. You guys out there want the information as soon as possible, and we do everything we can to do it. But there's only so much you can do with the phone and tweeting, right? All right. So we try to put it, oh, I don't know, on the Internet and get it out to you and have a full story. More importantly, having videos processed and thrown out there. 
because the internet was so slow, so pathetic at SEMA, shame on you guys at SEMA, God, because it was so bad, we could only get out half the videos that we actually put together. I'd say half, right? Yeah, yeah. I went over to our friends at Best Top, tried to use theirs. They said they would never buy it again because it was basically a modem, you know? Yeah. I, I, I was like looking for the nearest fast food place. Oh, yeah. Starbucks. I, I was looking for a Starbucks or something. Something, yeah. And it was actually faster to dial to upload the videos with our phones, which when you think about the fact that there's 160,000 people all with two phones and SEMA, still is incredible, because imagine how overcrowded those cell towers are. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. Right, and, and we're talking about Vegas and SEMA. SEMA is the second largest show Vegas has, and it's like the ninth largest show in the United States. So most shows we go to, right, there's um, press days, and there's, you know, maybe a thousand journalists yep. in this huge auditorium, so you can get around, it's really chill. Here, of course, there is no press days, so you've got 160,000 people all jammed in, and here's my least favorite thing. What is up with those, like, 30-year-olds on scooters, dude? It's kind of funny that we <laughs> what mentioned What is that. up with that, man? I injured my foot a little bit, and I actually was looking into renting a scooter. Yeah, but you had a reason. There yeah. Like, there's like these, these like totally <laughs> healthy people who cruise around <laughs> in <laughs> rental scooters, yeah. which are like 50 or 60 bucks a day. And, and, you know, you see some old people on them, too, you know, no de in right. difference to you and your people. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, is that all these young people are running around in there, and then I'm watching them. They get up, and they run over and take a picture of their car, and they go back over. And we're, and not, we're not talking about the stand-up scooters. We're, we're talking about the full-on Walmart, you know. Rascals I, or whatever. Yeah, I fall and I can't get up scooters. Crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, that, that, that wasn't my least favorite thing. Although it was really weird because this one person passed me this really shall we say, attractive woman who's on this thing, and she gets up, she's running around taking pictures, she goes back on it, sits down, and cuts off some old man who's cruising in a walker. <laughs> and I saw this, and I thought, oh my God, if I only had my camera rolling at the time, yes, it would be awesome. Chris, we have a 5, 5G LTE did to plan, but 5G LTE doesn't exist, <laughs> except for like certain parts of Denver and certain parts of LA. It, it's it it's just too early. It, it just we actually bought a phone just because of that. Didn't work. Yeah. Uh, so Maybe next year. Let's go down this list. Huh? Yeah, 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 please. Uh, my, my, one of my favorites, of course, was the Suzuki Jimny. Oh, mine too. I, and you interviewed the guy who actually, t so tell I, about it. I, okay, I, I didn't know so why it was there. The Suzuki Jimny, first of all, for those of you who do not know, Suzuki no longer exists in the United States for automakers. They do sell motorcycles here. But one of my favorite brands, I, I own what used to be the TFL Suzuki Samurai, and I'm working on it. We'll get to that later. The point is, is that they build really cool cars everywhere else, and that's including the Jimny, which is the spiritual successor to the Samurai. We'll never see it in the United States as a car for sale, period. So, seeing one at the show was awesome. Seeing a modified one was even better. This vehicle was modified. Now, the owner, who was a really nice guy, unfortunately, he only spoke Japanese. My Japanese isn't very good. In fact, I speak like seven words. Domo arigato. <laughs> Domo arigato. Mr. Roboto. <laughs> Konnichiwa, and stuff like that. No, the point is, is that uh, I actually, someone was there who could sort of translate. So this is what I got. It, the most important part of this vehicle is the fact that it has a turbocharged engine. The regular one puts out something south of 90 horsepower. This one puts out a lot more. He didn't have the numbers, but according to him, it's nearly twice as fast as it was before. Not very hard to do considering 90 horsepower stock. Uh, it has a body kit. It has a spacer, not a spacer, sorry. Uh, it has uh, offset wheels, uh, which are specifically built for this. Uh, the whole setup internally and externally has been updated in many different ways to make it more off-road worthy and more streetable. So it's a little bit of both. So that's solid anyway, front and rear axles, great car. Forbidden fruit. Forbidden right. fruit, we For, can never get one. We can never get one. All right, let's keep going on the list. Uh, Jeep Gladiator J6, there were so many Gladiators. Oh there, my god! There were a lot, but not as many as I expected. There was a thousand horsepower Hennessy, right? You were right in that uh, uh, shell booth the where Maximus. it was. Maximus. The Maximus, the yeah. The Maximus was there, yeah. But I, I think this by far was the coolest one. It was the one from Moab. Uh, I, I was walking around uh, doing a video and I said, this is the coolest one because it's the only, this is the way, this is what it should be, right? It really should be a two-door. Sure, a two-door with uh, a okay. third row seat. <laughs> how about, a, how about, how That's about what everybody wants. Uh, yeah, how about, a, yeah, okay, I'll we give got you that. a couple of donations. Yeah. Hey, Gregor. Oh. Thank you, Miller. God bless Mr. the men Miller. and women of the armed forces. Yes. Those that serve, that are served and passed away, praying for them on Veterans Day. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, my old man's one of those people, and so I'm behind you 100%. Thank you for your donation. And yes, uh, great SEMA coverage. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. We really wish we could do a better job. It's really tough. So we, we, we had 
all hands on deck. We tried really hard. And by the way, we will try to do a, a, a Veterans Day show on Monday, which is actually Veterans Day. So, yeah. So we're, we're not ignoring it, but we will be back on Monday. Yeah, we will definitely be since talking we're, about since it. Since we're all in the office. Anyway, uh, that was a cool Gladiator, which is uh, way we cool. We too. Way yeah. cool. And then, of course, there was the one in the shell booth, the 1,000 horsepower, right? At a certain point in time, you got to say, really? 1,000 horsepower? Look. 500 horsepower would be more than enough to have this thing snap axles and fly dangerously yeah. off-road. 1,000 horsepower, at a certain point in time, you got to go, okay, come on. Really? Yeah. I don't know. It's just too much. That, that's just ridiculous. But it was cool. But that's SEMA, it's, right? it's, it's, SEMA. Over, it's over the top. And that's the thing. Over the top is SEMA. Yep, Speaking right. Speaking of over the top. There we go. This is one of my favorites, too. Right there. Look at that, dude. A Tacoma drift truck. It's How cool is that? even more extreme from the back. Oh, my. <laughs> oh my, oh my, oh my. Now that, you know, I mean, I mean look, uh, there's two things you can do with a truck. You can lift it, which everybody does at SEMA, or you could do that. Slam it, which everybody does at SEMA. Well, not like that. Not though. like that, though. No, that, that is way that, better. That is, this is actually a purpose-built truck. The guys who built it, we actually interviewed a long time ago on TFL Now. Uh, the, um, what's yes, a tur Turbo. Yes, yeah. Twin turbos. Twin turbos. Yep. And uh, I actually, it's a really clean job. It really is. I'm not one for slam trucks, and I'm not a big drifting guy. But all together, this package really does look like it's properly made. The, the other cool thing, which actually we did a video on, and it's on this channel, was the uh, GM slam truck, right? Oh, yeah. Which was basically, um, well, let's call it a, a, a putting your toe in the water for uh, aftermarket uh, crate bolt engine so okay. electric bolt engine they took two bolt engines they, they you know put in the truck chevy bolt yeah chevy bolt they they take the whole bed and filled it with batteries and basically made an electric truck trying to build their business around crate bolt engines which is cool you know somebody i think dan said you know how electrification there wasn't much electrification oh there was something there we'll get to that on this list too. there was but it wasn't there was like two there was that one and then there was that one we'll the, get to yeah but for the most part electrification was a tiny percentage what what there was a lot of though was rooftop tents Remember seeing the roof? There was a roof. Somebody had taken, uh, I think it was a Golf R, right? Or GTI, one of those two, uh -huh. I don't remember. And they had slammed it to within an inch of its life. So it had like that much ground clearance. And then to make it perfect, the cherry on top was they put a big tent right on top of it. Why? I don't know. Because How it would ever go off road? Not, I don't know. Well, who says they have to go off road to have a tent to sleep in? Look, you get thrown out of the house because you took your dad's Volkswagen and slammed it. And because of that, you need a place to stay. Why not have that vehicle be the place you stay? I get it. I got to tell you, I would pay to see somebody take that to Walmart and spend the night. <laughs> okay, I will, I will do that. Bring that Volkswagen here. I'll freaking do that. Hey, Kevin. Uh, he says, hey, guys, have you thought of comparing the 2019 Ram Rebel versus the 2019 Ram 1500 Bighorn North Edition? Well, now we have, but how do we get our hands on North Edition? Yeah, we, we kind of got close. We did have a Bighorn. It was a few weeks ago. It was just kind of like the Mopar accessorized. So it wasn't right. the North Edition, but that's as close as we've gotten. Right, and that was actually a fun comparison. That's on TFL Truck, uh, right? Or is that off-road? That's on off-road. TFL Off-Road. So check that channel out. That's where that particular truck is. And it's, it was kind of fun. I got to drive it. All right. so. There were two Ram Rebels at the show, Nathan. There was a Ram Rebel off the grid, the Diesel Rebel. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was um, the Rebel Rouser. Big story behind the Rebel Rouser. But let's go to the uh, Rebel off the grid Diesel. This one right diesel. there. Yeah. Um, that's a really cool setup. It is as close as you can get to a power wagon without it actually being a power wagon. Well, we'll get the power wagons. I want to do this first. Right. Though. But this is, this is why I like it. Um, they really beefed it up and gave it everything you need to be off the grid. The fact that it has the diesel is a smart thing because you have better range. Um, it's, I just love the build. I think it's a beautiful build. Yeah, and uh, I love the color on it. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's pretty much everything you'd want in a Overlander. I wouldn't have those wheels. I'd have steel wheels with the possibility of being able to use real uh, bead locks, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, so, uh, you know, that was a cool one. And then let's talk about the, your favorite, of course, uh, the AEV build, which was a diesel power wagon, the uh, Prospector XL. I'm going to get to it. Don't worry. Oh, we're saving it for last. I know. Okay. I just Prospector was, uh, XL. Uh, Prospector. So this is my favorite truck yeah. from the event. Why? Well, because... It's everything the power wagon should be. The power wagon in my book is like an 85% awesome truck, but it's missing a couple things. It needs a diesel. I don't care what the excuses are coming out of Ram. They're no longer valid considering Ford has the tremor. So 
this vehicle has the diesel. It has locking front and rear diffs. It has one thing desperately needed on a power wagon, wider tires. Ugh. And just look at it. You know, oh my God, and an armor underneath is severe. Nathan, I am really curious to see what happens when the tremor comes out and you drive it. Will it still be power wagon don't care don't or know. will it be something else? What's your, what's your catchphrase I, I for the tremor? I can't give it away. Okay. I can't give it you, away. You have one. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh okay. yeah. Right. I've been practicing it in the mirror with my wife freaking out <laughs> behind me like, what the hell is that? <laughs> now this is... It, Shake into the bone. I can't wait. <laughs> I, 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 Shake I'm, and bake? <laughs> no, God, I'm not using what anybody else uses. It's got to be original, so then I can put on a T-shirt. No, the thing is, is the bottom line here is that the, this is everything the Power Wagon should be, and then some. And I'm not just saying this because I happen to like AEV. They're one of my favorite upfitters because they build really quality, good-looking stuff. But because that color, look at the color. Oh my God, that is beautiful. I love. Green and I, I've never had a green it's car like a, before. It's, you know what? It's like a uh, grabber line, the Mustang color. It's a little bit better than that, though. No, got to have a green. It's 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 no, it's something else. No, it's, it's it's a different color and it's a great green. I love it. So, anyway, in terms of features and everything else, this is what I think a power wagon should be, and that's pretty much what they built. The only thing it doesn't have that the power wagon has is a disconnecting front sway bar. And and there was a vehicle that we were very familiar with there, the Rebel Rouser. You drove it off road. To get to SEMA. Th so is it okay to talk about that now? Oh, okay. So we have a series that has been sponsored by Shell Rotella Gas Truck Oil. And, <laughs> yeah, I had to learn to say that. Um, <laughs> and it, that series, uh, which was made a lot with Roman and Andre as well, uh, tortured this truck with towing, with hauling, with off-roading, you name it. The final part of the series is a recap, but it's also getting to Vegas the hard way. So remember when these guys took it to um, Moab in 114 degree temperatures? We went right back there recently with 30 degree and 20 degree temperatures and took it off road and beat up on it. And we beat up on it progressively as we brought it over to SEMA. All right, I, I found a lovely Fiat 500X hat here. You like this? No? I have no idea why you came in on that. Because I, I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to give this away. I'm just trying to get clear out our, you know, our stock of hats here. I got, I got stuff in my garage if you guys really want it. Anyway, we'll, we'll give you, if you don't like the Fiat 500, let us know what hat you want. If we have I'm it, we'll send it to you. I'm sure they don't. Okay, but that, that, I'm, I'm just pick a hat and we'll give you the brand. These are truck guys who are watching right now. All right, now. fine, fine. I, I, I realize that. So here's the trivia question, I'm okay? I'm sorry. Here's, here's the trivia question. Uh, why is it called Shell Rotella? There's a very specific reason why it's called Shell Rotella. That's a really good question. If, so, if somebody could answer that, then they will get, you pick, you send us an email with the brand, and if we have that brand, I'm talking about GM. I, I'm timing them to see how long it takes them to go to Wikipedia and back. Yeah, let's see how long it takes them. So you'll get the, uh, you'll get the hat. <laughs> okay, so there you go. You, you're in the running for the Fiat 500 hat. <laughs> so uh, finally, just to wrap up on this, uh, so we brought it over to SEMA. We actually got a chance to put it on display, covered in dirt, at their booth at SEMA, which is it's still there now. If you guys are going to be hanging uh, out there today. I think it's gone now. Actually, it's gone there now because Andre went to pick it up. Yeah. But it was out there all day at SEMA. And we got a chance to go up on stage and actually answer some questions and do an autograph session. It was great. Mark, wa so Mark Downey awesome. wants to know if we had a chance to talk to Ford about the Bronco or Baby Bronco. We did more than that, dude. We did a lot Andre more than that, my friend. Andre uh, got the ride in the Bronco race truck. That's son There's of a, a video on TFL Off-Road. So it's not an official unveil of the Bronco, but it's the Bronco, it's the racing version of the Bronco. So we get a really good idea of what it looks like oh. and some of the components. Oh, look at this. LS Swap the World says, Nathan, you, you reply to this. I love how this channel is so biased towards RAM. They don't talk about the mechanical failures of the Hemi engine, a.k.a. cam falling. Hey, didn't we just talk about like our drive shaft like breaking out? Yeah, I mean, did you not see that the, the drive video. shaft busted? And also our the MPG video. issues that we've had with our 5.7 yeah, and the e-torque and also some of the issues that have come up with various diesels and whatnot that have been put on our website, more than one website, more than once, and then we talked about it live several times. Look, dude, you want to say I'm biased because I love a power wagon? I agree. I'm biased. I completely am see-through. Although because, that may be about to change. But like that might said. change. And what happens if the tremor's better and I like the tremor? Oh, my God, I'm going to sell it for Ford. Oh, no. Look, I just, uh, I'm kind of a male slut when it comes to vehicles. I just go to the ones that I like the most, period. Now, if you think that because we own one of these and we took it over to that event, that means that we're sellouts, bear in mind, we damaged that vehicle on camera more than once. 
And so I don't and really. Before that, we had a Ford. Yeah, before that we had a Ford, and we've had Porsches and Volkswagens and um, we're equal opportunities. And a Pontiac Aztec. And a Pontiac Aztec. Oh yeah. my God, I sold up to Pontiac. Yeah. I yeah. hate that car. <laughs> God, I hate that car. But I think I think the giveaway there is Ellis swapped the world. So you know, once yeah. again, fanboys, fanboys, fanboys. What are you gonna do? What with are you gonna that? do? Ellis you know, we, we we try to be as objective as possible. Yeah. But sorry, but you know. You know, it's, it's what it, is. It, it, it is, you know, and I, I'm, I'm always honest about it. And by the way, honesty sometimes chaps people's hides because sometimes I talk about a vehicle they adore and I say, yeah, maybe it's not so great. All right, let's keep going down this list. Did you like Jay Leno's Bronco, Nathan? Yes, I did, actually. Did and, you? Oh, God, I sold out to Jay. <laughs> Jay Leno isn't necessarily one of my favorite comedians. He's funny, and he's not one of my favorite entertainers either. But he's one of my favorite car guys because the dude's got a garage with like 500 freaking cars in it and he has the money to repair them properly. There it is. This is cool because normally I like things being stock, but when someone mods it, I like it when they do it and it's tasteful. This is not only tasteful, too. This has the GT500 engine in it and it's the only application of a GT500 with a manual six-speed transmission. That's Five a manual. Speed. Is it a five-speed? Five speed, I could have yeah. sworn it was a six. Okay. Yeah. So it's a manual transmission that's inside this vehicle. Now, what they did was they beefed up the axles, the brakes, the shafts, everything inside of it, the interior, everything has been beefed up and modernized. It's safer, and it's a lot easier to drive. But it is crazy powerful. We actually have on uh, one of our Twitter accounts the sound of this thing starting up and being revved a little oh, bit, oh, too. I, I was going to talk about this one, but it's a Ford, Nathan, so maybe I shouldn't. Don't talk about Ford because we're sellers. <laughs> um, uh, let's keep going. Uh, it's the uh, Pax Power Ranger Raptor based on a U.S. spec Ranger with genuine oh, OEM yeah, Raptor parts. Thing. That's pretty cool. This thing looks great. Yeah, I would buy that. Well, can we buy a Ranger and build it like that? Yeah, the problem is, yeah, we could, but it would cost ten times as much as if it, the factory it built it. Yeah, so that's the thing about this truck. It's expensive. Yeah. Uh, it's somewhere, I can't remember exactly. It's on tfltruck.com. It's somewhere in the 60s, including the price of the truck. Um, this is done by Pax Power, who oh. they're a Texas uh, firm who also did the V8 or F-150 Raptor. Right. And so this is based on the American spec Raptor. So it has the 2.3 EcoBoost. It's not the diesel. You mean the Ranger? Uh, Ranger, I'm sorry. Uh, so it's US Ranger powertrain, but Euro spec Raptor OEM genuine parts. So, so uh, it da just looks David the still says uh, Rotella means municipality, not even close, dude. Maybe you can't Google it. Maybe that's one of those questions that is not easily Googleable. Why? You know, because otherwise somebody would have had it by now. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, the next thing right below that is talk about Trabant and Tatra instead. It's safe. Um, we've uh, had experience with both those vehicles, by the have, way. Yeah, we have. Um, quite a bit. <laughs> and, and we actually got in trouble a little bit with one of them. All right, let's keep going. Um, the Nissan, oh, I'm picking Nissan now. Nissan Frontier Desert Sorry, Runner. Sorry, we're, we're going to give it a rest now. The, yeah, the, the two-wheel drive uh, Desert Runner with a turbocharged 5.6. Um, Titan V8, there's also 600 plus horsepower. So look at that thing. I really like that. I, I do too. Something very funny happened about a month and a half ago. I caught wind of a rumor that the new Nissan Frontier will have a turbocharged four-cylinder engine as a future option. It's just a rumor. And I even wrote about it. And all of a sudden, they s throw this big V8 turbocharged inside of a Frontier. Now, I'm not saying that I was right, but it is Providence, right? So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Little uh, thing to ring about. Okay, wait. First of all, Chase says Rotella means small wheel. I believe maybe it's referring to small oil molecules rolling for protection. You know, Chase, you're not uh, not quite there. Hey, Maui Chris says giving uh, free super chats. TFL is giving free super chats to everyone. <laughs> uh, no, you're 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 you're, yeah, you're not quite you're right. Close. But I'll give you a hint because I want somebody to get this right. Uh, the hint is, in it's in the name. The hint is it's in the name. Um, that's all I'm telling you. Okay. If, if you look at the name, it, it's a huge hint to what Shell Rotella uh, gas, um, what is it? Um, oil. Oil for trucks means, yeah. Yeah, and by the way, that uh, oil originally, the name uh, was attached to diesels, right? Yeah, exactly. And the one we tested was the, is the earliest version for gas trucks. That's the whole thing about it. All right, one more before we get to the questions. The Bronco Arbaja 1000 racer. Yeah, okay, so remember we were talking about um, getting a taste? That's it. 
And you know who got to ride in it? Not me. Nope. Not, not you. Me. No. Andre. Andre. Yep. Andre. Oh, sure did. Son of a... So he got a chance to ride in this thing, and it is a beast. The thing is, it doesn't really tell us much about the production version of this truck. However, we do know a few things because of it. We know how it's shaped now. We know what the body is going to look like pretty much. And we have a pretty good idea that Ford has every intention to race this vehicle in the Baja, in a few other events that are coming up, and they fully intend to not lose. So, interesting truck. Yep, interesting truck, and I think uh, it makes me happy because, Nathan, it's square, it's boxy, it looks like I think a Bronco should look. I was worried that they were going to go, you know, all... Softy? Like, no, I was I put a blazer on it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we just, yeah. I went there. Uh, but, but, but to be fair... And well, what I mean by that is, yeah. right, the Blazer was once upon a time a, a body-on-frame truck, yeah. and they turned it into a kind of like... That's a crossover. Yeah, exactly. It's a crossover that's not built for off-roading. Ford has always been very upfront about the fact that the new Bronco would be for off-road, but we never knew how sincere they were. So this is a really good look at what this truck could be. So I'm very excited about that. And we, we're not expecting it. Nobody knew in advance that this was happening. They actually brought everybody out to the desert and didn't tell them what they were about to see. Andre was just thinking it was going to be, you know, he's going to wind up in some American gulag, you know, like home. And, you know, for whatever reason, he said something nasty about Ford. Nope. This is what he got to ride in. This was unveiled. So very cool. Uh, so this guy looked like he. Look, this guy looks like he uh, Googled uh, the question. Shell is named due to the prior profession of the founding family in seashell trade. No, not quite. It looks like you Googled that and looked like you got a Wikipedia entry. Mm. No, nope, not quite. Not quite. I'll let you know at the end if somebody gets it right. But we're, we're, you're kind of you're kind of not right. It's not right. I can't give that one to you either. Sorry. Okay, this one guy says Shell Rotella, uh, Rotella was originally designed for rotary engines. No, absolutely wrong. But thank you for putting that in there nonetheless. We All appreciate right. it. Let's get to our questions. Chris wants to know, hey, brothers, I bought a 2019 Power Wagon. A friend of uh, was preaching to me all Hemi Motorsports warp heads at 75,000 miles. I'll be doing a major to i'll be doing a, a major to end replacement if i get extended warranty they'd be paying for that any info on the 19 ram hemi being a piece of crap head warping nightmare oh that's mm. a long uh yeah um i've never heard that actually uh, there's a lot of issues with hemis but i've never heard that they're warping heads that's not something and we you know we would know yeah we really would yeah. um now there have been st uh, stories about oil pump failures and that leading to some other issues but that's not quite the same thing um, I've also heard somebody recently say that there's some fuel injection issues as well. Once again, that's not part of this. And let's face it, the Hemi in its current form has been around for an, an a awful long, long time. time. 5.7 yeah. liter Hemi. Yeah. Now we do know that the large displacement Hemi, once again the one that's using the power wagon, that one seems to be pretty solid. Uh, they've been pretty happy with its performance. And from what I know, it uh, seems to last a while. But so, have not heard that. Have not heard that. But that's not to say it hasn't happened. I recommend you go to the um, forums and check out and see what they have to say about right. it. Nathan, this one is especially for you. William wants to know, Nathan, when do we get to see the tricked out Samurai? I'm anxious to see it. It's my all-time favorite off-road vehicle because of its size. Um, many write it off because it's underpowered. So show us what you've got, big boy. Yeah, big boy. I, I, I wish I could do it right now. So a uh, quick update on the progress. Uh, I, I needed to replace the brakes. It's the first thing that has to happen before anything else happens. It will have new shocks up front. It will have a mild lift, and it will have uh, wheels and tires, a few other things, probably early spring at this point. Unfortunately, Brakes are going to take me a little bit longer. I'm doing it myself. I'm not hiring anybody to do it. Once that's done, and once I'm happy with it, then I would like to give it a tune. It needs a little bit more help. Uh, the carburetor is sort of stinky, um, and I think that I could just uh, retune it a little bit and maybe make it run better. So early spring, hopefully I'll be bringing it to TFL, and we'll do a video. Kevin says uh, he had a 2014 Ram Hemi and had no issues. Yeah, um, and I have a friend who has a 2012 uh, Ram with a Hemi, and he still drives it. He's got like 220,000 miles on it. But I, I, he's also modified the crap out of it. So, so, so Jeeping.net says, uh, I know Shell comes from the original seashell trading business. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, once again, yes, but not the answer we're looking for. Okay. All right, keep going. Um, so we have one more from uh, Stoy. He says, I'm looking to buy a new hunting rig. Hunt rig, far uh, out. Yep, yep. I'm currently in Iowa and run a GMC 28 
2008 Sierra 1500 Z71. Mm. I typically buy a new rig every 10 years. Hey, keep it long. Yeah. I guess that's about the average, right? People keep their vehicles 10 well, years. Well, trucks seem to have a longer shelf life. So than he's cars. looking at a Toyota 4Runner, TRD Pro, or a Chevy Trail Boss. Mm. Um, Those are three very unusual choices because, well, the Toyota 4Runner and the Chevy Trail Boss. It's mid size versus full size. Well, not only that, but the Chevy Trail Boss is a pickup truck. The 4Runner is an SUV. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me give you some more information. I okay. live in Iowa, but travel to Western Mountain States each year to go hunt big game. Th that would be our area. Yeah, I'm looking for a better off-road performance and MPG over the Sierra. I tow a light boat that's under 1,500 pounds. What do you recommend and what mod mm. should I get? Should I buy a front locker or either of uh, those two? So uh, here's my advice. First go. of all, if you're hunting big game, I hate when you put, like, dead deer inside vehicles. We almost bought a Land Cruiser where a guy used it as his hunting rig. It was gross, dude. Carpet does not do well with blood. So, uh, you know, I mean, if you're going to go hunting, just throw it in the back of the pickup truck and then hose it off. I do agree with him on the pickup truck part, at least. Yeah, yeah. Um, not, not because of the blood, though. The second, the second part of this is, I don't think you even need a front locker. Really, you know. A rear uh, locker is, is, is plenty really, for most. It's plenty for most. Most people will agree that a front locker is, you know, if you're going to go rock crawling someplace in Moab and you're going to do some really serious stuff, you know, like you're going up and over boulders. But for 99% of the time, you really don't need a front locker. So the Trail Boss does have a rear locker, and that's something to keep in mind. Um, I would imagine that, there, and there are other ones, if you're talking about getting something like the Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, that's a smaller truck, right, compared to the Trail Boss. So why not cut the difference between the two of them and look at the Chevy Colorado ZR2, which does have a front locker standard. And that way you kind of kill two birds with one stone, and unless you get some sort of massive mutant buck, you should be able to put just about any kill in the back of that truck. That would be my recommendation. Yes, I agree too. I would wholeheartedly support what Nathan said. And um, it's my birthday. Yeah, go for that, dude. Wow, you so Absol Nathan is absolutely right. Well, Nathan, we've uh, wasted another half hour <laughs> of your time. Uh, and uh, let There's me. There's one thing we didn't talk about, though. Okay, uh, what's that? The other the electric bill that we were going to get to. Yeah, I was curious. It wasn't on the list. I didn't see it there. Yeah, so so the last, and I think the coolest vehicle that we saw at SEMA was a vehicle which was done by uh, Wabasto. Now, Wabasto, you may have never heard of, but it's a company that does 99.9% .9 of all soft tops. Oh, I thought they did salsa and, and stuff for a steak. No, no, that's something else. Okay. So, Wabasto, <laughs> it does sound like a steak sauce, doesn't it? Try Wabasto with your next yeah, ribeye. That's, that's, yeah, that's totally <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, so they do all the soft tops, and... Uh, uh, what is uh, really cool is that they're getting into the electrification business, and so they're building electric power plants. And as a SEMA build, a lot of the stories out there about this vehicle, which is an all-electric Ford Mustang, have been absolutely wrong. Ford did not build this. It was, it was done as a SEMA build for uh, Ford, but it wasn't done with it, Ford as... Right. It's, it, not a, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not a Ford vehicle. It's not a Ford tech. It's tech, yeah. It's, it's, they did it, and they brought it as a builder and put it in the Ford stand. And so what it is is a 1,000-horsepower electric motor paired to a six-speed manual. Manual transmission, That's baby. Right. That part's really drive. cool. Yeah, to show off that they can actually do electric drive. Yeah, and it's supposed to be just an utter animal, well, with 1,000 horsepower. And the thing about electric motors, which is cool, is that you have instant torque at zero RPM, the minute you put your, down, your foot down, you have all that torque. I don't know how they're going to get traction. I know. I, I asked that question uh -huh. because I interviewed the guy from Boston. Yeah. So normally at a thousand pound foot of torque, right, you would just smoke those tires right off. Oh, yeah. Well, they have three different modes. They have like chill, something else, and beast mode. And beast mode is the one that... Just you, lets you smoke yeah. them? Yeah. Is that, is that, is that going to be your uh, trimmer? Uh, catch beast line? mode? Beast mode. Not That's bad. actually not a bad one. That's Maybe bad, I'll think. Yeah. I'll think about changing it. <laughs> um, but no, this this is actually, you know, it's one of those things where it kind of addresses the two sides of the whole electric argument. The one side of you know we need electrification. The other side of well, yeah, but what about the fun? This might actually address both of those. I am curious to how much it weighs. I wasn't able to find out because weight would really be the issue with this thing on the track. But in it, terms of fun. Yeah, really cool. It might cool. be fun. And we didn't talk about Chevys, but we, I did do a bunch of videos on a bunch of different Chevys. So Chevy had brought um, a Carhartt edition. I thought that was kind of commercial, so we didn't really want to. We didn't really want to talk about that. Um, they also did this really cool. Basically, it was a, a mid-sized uh, Colorado that they took everything off and made it into a troop. What was uh, it called? It was the I. I. 
SV. Yeah, something. Um, it yeah, it's a, it's a troop uh, carrier. Yeah, that was really and, cool. And it was, it's not just a concept. It's actually something that's in the running right now for a military contract, and that is on TFL Off-Road with pictures and everything else and specs on that vehicle. It's pretty cool. And then they had a, a Silverado racing truck, which could be the, the kind of the forebearer of a Raptor fighter if and when GM ever gets around to building one. It's really close to what it, they would need to fight the Raptor we with. We think. We think. We don't know, though. So those were the uh, three GM builds that we profiled that are on this channel, if you want to see them. The one that didn't get any views, and I, the one that I thought was the coolest was a troop carrier. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just really cool. It, well, everybody who saw it, they had no idea it was based on the Colorado because it just doesn't look like a Colorado. Yeah. You know what it looks like? It looks like a monster side-by-side, -side, something that some maniac came up with that could hold like 11 people. All right. It's really cool. So I feel like we didn't give away the 500 Well, why don't you tell them what the answer the, the was? The 500X, which is, I guess, not surprising. Uh, so the question was, what is the name Shell Rotella based on, right? Mm-hmm. And if you guys are observant, you'll note that Shell does a whole bunch of different oils. It's not just Shell Rotella for gas truck, right? They do for big truck, for diesels, right? Right. And all of their oils are named after different types of shells. Shell Rotella. It's a type of shell. Rotella right. is a type of shell. And all their oils are named after different types of shells. That was the answer. Uh, and that was the answer that but, but you couldn't Google, guys apparently. But came a little bit close. And, and, and thank you for trying. We'll try this again, maybe with a better hat. So, um, in the future. <laughs> That's so, fine. You like the 500X. It, it, I'd like it for my wife. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. So, you, you were thinking about buying one. What, what, why did you become such a... Because it's she didn't a want Fiat it? and it's... Yeah, well, it doesn't have a manual transmission option. For oh, well, would, you rather get, would you rather get the Jeep version? Yes. Okay, there yeah. you go. There you go. Okay, all right. so guys, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful weekend. We will be back on Veterans Day. And yep. for those of you who celebrate... Congratulations and thank you for your service and everything else that goes along with it. Have a great weekend and see you guys Monday. Ciao. Oh, I should probably play the music to... Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm still getting uh, used to this whole music thing. Yeah, play us and, out, and, and guys, I got to be honest with you, I think this rocks. Yeah. Yeah.